Hey y'all, Coach Enifai here, starting a long-anticipated series on the Keys of Enoch. Yep, that's right. We're about to look through this book, starting in chapter 1. Prayerfully, we're going to make our way all the way to the end of this book, expounding on many of these verses. This is called the Book of Knowledge, the Keys of Enoch. And in it, over the course of time, we should learn exactly what this phrase is talking about here. Where it says, this is a teaching on seven levels to be read and visualized in preparation for the brothers of light. Yeah, we're going to find out exactly who these brothers of light are. You may be actually hearing about them in the news. Thing is, since we don't know exactly who these beings are, there are many people who are portraying them as aliens or other things like that. This is why this book is important. It's because it breaks down who exactly these beings are and tells us what they're going to do here when they come. They're not aliens at all, these brothers of light. They're actually who we recognize as angels. The thing about this book is we'll no longer generalize everything in the spirit world as an angel or as an Elohim because it gives specific names and tasks and jobs for these individuals up there. So we'll learn to recognize the Ophanim, the thrones, who Enoch was, and other spiritual beings over the course of this book. Then it says right there, this book is to be delivered by the quickening of the people of light. These individuals too will be identified who exactly they are. These are people, not angelic figures or aliens or anything like that. We'll find out who they are and why they were chosen to deliver this information and why it's so important that they deliver it in nowadays and now times. Although I'm going to try to hit most of the verses in the book, I'm going to ignore many of the pictures, the illustrations in the book. They seem to kind of be an afterthought just added to the book. But some of them will appear to be useful, so we'll touch on them as we go. Now, we already posted a video where we did a read-along of the introduction of this book. Um, you can actually see many of the read-alongs that we've done. We've made it all the way up to um, the second part of the book now that Christian is helping to edit the documents before we let Voice Girl read them. They sound much better now. So after this video, you can go over and check out the introduction to this book. It has a vast wealth of knowledge about what this book is about. We're going to come all the way down to the beginning of the first series there's actually three series in the book. The first one says it's the bio computer keys to our consciousness time zone revealed to me by master control messengers, Metatron and Ophanim, Enoch. So what it's saying here is that Enoch is one of these Ophanim. And we find out in this book who the Ophanim are. They are the spirit beings who have been the guides over time. We find out that anybody who has been a prophet in the Bible or getting their prophetic information from these beings who we have always called angels, but we'll find out that they are actually the class of angel called the Ophanim. Anytime you get any type of divinely inspired information, even in modern times, that's who's actually talking to you, these Ophanim. And it could very well be Enoch himself. Now, here in chapter one, it covers three different parts. They're kind of intertwined there. This is the only chapter of the book that does this where it combines three different keys. So it kind of throws the chapters off. When we start chapter two, we'll actually be looking in key number four. But anyway, we see that key number one, let me go ahead and read these. It says, we live in a many and one universe. And that's going to be covered here. Why it's important for us to understand these multiple universes that we live in and the results if we don't recognize that we live in a multiple universe. Key number two says, the creative mind as the center of this universe is known as Lord, King, and Redeemer. So this right here is talking about our individual universe and who it is that's governing this particular universe. Um, it says here, Lord, King, Redeemer, but you would also include our Messiah. Key number three, is that the creations which survive are creations which desire that the species gather life and light into the image and similitude of the higher evolution 
which is the living universe. Now, this we've always heard, and that's what we're going to find out over the course of this book, is that this is really no new information, or not much new information, I should say. It seems new because of how it is actually defining many of these terms. We've never really seen these things defined in such detail. So it's going to be new information, but we can go back and find references to everything that's said in the Old Testament and in the New Testament and even in the Third Testament. This right here, who is actually talking about at first glance would appear to be the 144,000, as well as the multitude that no man can number, but it's giving us details on why that particular group will survive the apocalypse and the other events that's coming on to the world. So let's go ahead and get into verse one, which is talking about how we live in an open ended universe. Now, this to me was actually a new thing. Turns out many of the scientists have been trying to tell us this for a long time, that we live in a multi-universe, that this is not the only universe. You hear them, you know, talking about Big Bang and the creation of this universe. As an aside note, that is a biblical thing. The Big Bang actually did happen. You read about it in Second Enoch. You hear all about it. Um, that's important to this discussion because a lot of these uh, principles which sound new only do so because there's individuals that's withholding this information from us, especially the scientists. They're reading this book in Second Enoch and even First Enoch, and they're gathering this scientific knowledge. But instead of sharing it with us, like I'm doing here, where I'm just showing you the source, they act like they came up with the ideas on their own and they pursued mathematics and science to actually prove their so-called theories or their hypothesis. But it's not that at all. They're actually getting just like they got the Big Bang. They got it out of a book. Uh, Second Enoch describes it in detail, even names who it was that was caused to come apart as a Big Bang, so to speak, and how it is that this particular universe was created. Now, verse two goes on to tell us why it is that we recognize that we live in this open-ended universe, this multi-universe, because once we realize that we live in a multiple universe, then you got to understand that there is a higher being here. As long as we can focus in as if this is the only universe, we can act like, or some people can act like it was created randomly. But when you look at how these universes are in a crystalline structure, which means that just like we has the Maseroff here or those 12 signs in the sky, each one of these universes will have an earth and they will have that same pattern in the sky to go by. And when you look at it from that aspect, there's no way to deny a higher being, a higher mind as it's described here as the creator of all things. We see that in verse three, where it says this requires a higher mind. Like I said, we read in this book that these universes are crystalline, which means they are the same. They would look to be the same. Each one would have a earth. Each one would have a sun and each one of them would have a moon and each one of them would go through these same life cycles of human history the same as we did one thing that comes to mind as i think on this is how they call them dust worlds are kind of like uh breeding ground for spirits where we come down here and we learn uh different precepts and different principles here in the flesh where time is slowed down so that when we go off to those higher mansions, we already have these life lessons that we learn here on this planet. We see in there in verse four, it says that this higher mind is seen as Adonai, King, Melech, Redeemer, or Messiah. And this is who we've always recognized as our father, as our creator. But what we're learning here is that each one of these universes has this creator spirit. And we're going to find out in this book, maybe even in this chapter, how this works like this. It's, it's like once this universe was spoken into existence, then we had to have these governing spirits who we've always recognized as Elohim uh, guiding us and leading us through our spiritual evolution. Again, preparing us for these higher mansions. Verse five is talking about how once we recognize that we live in this multiple universe, that we can then start to recognize this living mind. We can recognize his living mind, the father, the most high, after we recognize our living mind. So this is all part of spiritual evolution. 
All right, guys, um, I said I'm going to keep these videos short. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here and we'll pick up in verse six on the next lesson. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have that bell notification pushed so you can see when these classes come out. If you want to read ahead, uh, you can check the description for some links that we have to the book. And you could also find a read along that we've done for this whole chapter. So you can actually listen to this entire chapter as you wait for the next part of this lesson to come out. And in the meantime, y'all pray for me and I'll do the same for you. And Shalom.